You throw on a headset and you're transported to a virtual world where you can feel everything and control everything with your mind, just like in Sword Art Online or Shangri-La Frontier. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, we're still a long ways away from having an experience like that, and you would have been right. But a Neuralink update video has just tackled one of the hardest problems we have when it comes to getting full dive VR. And that's the ability to control a computer with just your mind efficiently. Now I'll be showing some clips from the update and what I think it could mean for the full dive VR space. Very simply put, uh, what the Neuralink device um, does right now is it allows you to control devices simply just by thinking. Now to put that a bit more concretely, um, I'm about to play a video of our first user. His name is Noland, if you remember from DJ section. And what Noland is doing is he's looking at a normal off the shelf MacBook Pro and with his Neuralink device, as you're going to see, he's going to be able to control the cursor simply with his mind, no eye tracking, no other sensors. And what's special about this particular moment is this is the first time someone is using a Neuralink device to fully control their cursor. This is really exciting to me because it's showing that Neuralink is able to work with regular computing devices without insane modifications and setups. All you need to do is download software and calibrate it and boom, your Neuralink is working. Now, of course, just moving a cursor is not enough for full dive VR, but in the next clip I'm going to show you, it's their roadmap on how they're going to expand the understanding of the brain for even more control. Beginning, this is just tip of the iceberg. Our end goal is to really build a whole brain interface. And what do we mean by whole brain interface? We mean being able to listen to neurons everywhere, be able to write information to neurons anywhere, be able to have that fast data wireless transfer to enable that high bandwidth connection from our biological brain to the external uh, machines, and be able to do all of this with fully automated surgery, as well as uh, enable 24 hours of usage. This is exactly what 4Dive VR needs. The ability to scan the whole brain to see what it's doing and what it's firing so you can have more control within the game once it's uh, fully understood and then being able to stimulate neurons, which allows you to feel things within the virtual worlds because you feeling things is just your neurons firing in a certain pattern. Then there's fast wireless data transfer. Nothing will take you out of the immersion faster than having lag or delay. So fast data transfer is definitely a must for a full dive VR experience, especially if you want it to be immersive. We're gonna go off on a little tangent. All the stuff that Neuralink has done so far has allowed them to give their users basically robotic telepathy. The ability to control machines with just their mind. He's a fellow left-handed guy who writes in cursive all the time. And what he mentioned is since a spinal cord injury from like three, four years ago, uh, he's been able, unable to just like draw or write. Um, and he always brags about how good his handwriting was. So he actually got to put it to the test. We gave him a robotic arm and I think this is the first time he tried using the robotic arm to write anything. And this is a sped up version of writing at the convoy trial and drawing something. Now, this was really cool to see. Someone controlling a robotic arm was just their mind. It got me thinking that like someday soon in the future, we're gonna be walking around like Dr. Octavius with a bunch of robot arms strapped to our backs and we're just having them do tasks for us. Uh, uh, hopefully we don't go evil in the Neuralink um, fries our brain and we actually turn into Doc Ock. Okay, back to being somewhat serious. Another thing that's important for full dive VR is having a really good user experience. And Neuralink is also concerned about having a good user experience because if you don't have one that's good, your product usually fails or no one wants to use it. Each spike that our implant detects goes on a fairly remarkable journey to ultimately form a pixel on a participant's display. And that experience starts with, of course, unboxing. The very first time that a participant pairs to and meets their implant, this invisible part of their body, and sees their own spikes materialize across the display. From there, they'll go into body mapping and actually imagine moving their arm again and get a feel for what feels natural to them and what doesn't. And they'll take that into calibration using one of those motions to actually move a cursor again. Iteratively refining their control as they go throughout this process until finally 
they're teleported back to their desktop and can experience the magic of neural control for the very first time. The next thing, and probably most important thing, is machine learning. Machine learning is what allows Neuralink to read human neurons and turn that into something that a computer can use. And it's going to be an important part in helping researchers and developers increase the amount of neuron activity it can read, which leads to even more control over a computer or machine, which would be very important for full dive VR. Say, being an ML engineer at Neuralink is a bit like being a kid in a candy store. <laughs> When you think of the inputs to most ML systems out there, you might think of pixels, of tokens, or of a user's Netflix watch history. <laughs> the input to our systems is a little different. It is pure, raw brain power. And when we think about the ML systems we can build here at Neuralink, really we're limited by our imagination and our creativity. There's no reason our ML systems can't do anything that the human brain can do, such as controlling a phone, typing, or even gaming. Right here to my left is actual footage of Alex, one of our participants, playing a first-person shooter against RJ, another one of our participants. Now, for those unfamiliar with first-person shooters, this is not a trivial feat. It requires two fully independent joysticks, or four continuous degrees of control, as well as multiple reliable buttons. All of this is really cool, not just from a full-dive VR perspective, but from just helping people who weren't able to do anything actually gain some control back, uh, being able to do things now. Like paraplegics who have no use of their arms, bodies, or legs, now being able to use a computer without having someone else there to do it for them. Now I know there's people who probably think it would be cool to be able to control technology with their mind, but they would never want to get an implant. The last thing you or I would want is uh, a unlimited, break from the ads? want a break from the ads, uh, running in our ads? brain 24 seven. But there are tech, other technologies that do similar things to Neuralink, and I'm gonna show you one of them. We call it Galia. It's a multimodal biosensing headset, and it is absolutely packed with sensors. It can measure the user's heart, skin, muscles, eyes, and brain, and it combines that capability with head-mounted displays or augmented and virtual reality headsets. Additionally, we're exploring the integration of non-invasive electrical neural stimulation as a feature. The Galia software suite can turn the raw sensor data into meaningful metrics. With some of the sensors, we're able to provide new forms of real-time interactivity and control. And with all of the sensors, we're able to make quantifiable inferences about high-level states of mind, things like stress, fatigue, cognitive workload, and focus. So what do you think? Are you excited for this, or are you still turned off by the idea of having a brain implant? Leave a comment and let me know how you feel. And if you like this kind of video, uh, consider liking and subscribing.